Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mitch. Arch Linux gives you the option of using various kernels and even having more than one kernel installed at the same time. So today I'm going to take a look at it. So let's get to it. I'm in Arch Linux with the Qtile window manager. So I'm going to use my keyboard because, you know, the mouse is not really available. And I'm going to do mod key F to open up Firefox. And now we're at Firefox. And I'm going to go to the Arch Linux website. And I'm going to go to the wiki. And I'm going to type in the search field kernel. I'm going to click on kernel. And you know what? I'm going to make this a little larger. So we see here we have officially supported kernels. There's stable, hardened, long-term, real-time kernel, and a Zen kernel. Now, I've been using Arch Linux for, I don't know, three years. And I've been using Linux for four years, and almost four years. At the end of this month will be four years for Linux. And Arch Linux, I've probably been using pure Arch Linux for three years. Uh, something like that. <laughs> I don't know exactly how long. And I've always used the stable kernel here and the long-term support kernel. And most of the time I use the long-term support kernel, but the odd time I switch over into stable. But there's also hardened and the Zen kernel and this real-time kernel. So right here, it tells you the hardened kernel is a security-focused Linux kernel. It hardens the patches, and I guess it makes it more difficult for someone to hack into your system. I suppose. I don't know a lot about these things. And the Zen kernel, it's a collaborative effort to provide the best Linux kernel possible for everyday systems. And there's a fifth kernel. <laughs> it's called Real-Time Kernel, maintained by a small group of core developers. This patch allows nearly all the kernel to be preempted with the exception of a very few small regions of code. Well, out of these five kernels, I have four of them already installed. And that's another thing too about Arch Linux is you can have more than one kernel installed at a time. So right now I have four kernels installed, but I didn't install the real-time one, which I probably should do. And interestingly enough, they have a real-time stable kernel and a real-time LTS kernel. So really, they have six kernels available. Right? And now there's other kernels you can get as well. You can get kernels from the AUR, but I've never done it, and I wouldn't recommend it unless you have a real powerful machine and you know what you're doing. Because uh, a kernel in the AUR, if you have to build a kernel... I suppose it would take a lot of power in your computer, and, and I suppose it would take time for the kernel to build and install. So I'm going to go to a different workspace. Let's go to Workspace 5. I'm going to open up a terminal. And I'm going to make it a little larger. And I'm going to do uname r. So right now I have the Zen kernel. Well, I have four kernels installed. So what I have is I have the stable kernel, the LTS kernel, the hardened kernel and the Zen kernel. So right now I'm running on the Zen kernel, as you can see. And what I'm going to do is install these two kernels as well. I'm going to close Firefox and I'm going to go to Workspace 5. And I'm going to do sudo. Oh, before I do that, let's do this. Let's do um, neo fetch. Let's just make that a little smaller. Oh, yeah, it does right here, right at the top. It tells you I'm running the Zen kernel. Okay, and NeoFetch says I'm running at 326 megabytes. Let's do an HTOP. And HTOP says 314 megabytes. And I don't know why there's a little discrepancy there, but hey, it is what it is. So let's quit out of there. So I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to install. Now, before I do that, I don't know if I have enough space in my uh, boot menu. Let's do LSB OK. So my boot menu is 500 megabytes. Usually I only make a 200 megabyte boot menu. 
and I had it installed the other day with a 200 megabyte, well actually it was a week ago, about a week or two ago, I had a virtual machine with a 200 megabyte boot menu, and I tried to install four kernels, and it, I couldn't make grub. So then I created this virtual machine with a 500 megabyte boot menu, and I was able to make grub after installing the four kernels. Now I don't know if there's gonna be enough room to make grub with five or six kernels in. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna install anything right now. What I'm gonna do is, uh, you know what? So let's try it and see what happens. Let's do sudo pacman s linux dash rt linux dash r t dash lt and if it takes it and if i can make rub i'll have six kernels installed so let's put my password in oh and you know why it didn't work <laughs> i gotta put an s at the end of this one here we go hit enter and it's installing two more kernels but the question is i don't think i'm going to be able to make rub because i only have a 500 megabyte boot drive let's hit enter it's going to install it but i won't be able to make rub hmm and i'm getting an error message uh, let's see what happens if i make rub so let's do sudo grub make and big dash o that's an o and not a zero boot grub grub and config well cfg ah see i got an error no space left on device <laughs> let's remove these two kernels let's put my password in I'm gonna remove them and i'm gonna make rub again let's make rub and let's reboot so when you reboot you got to be fast because right now i have four kernels installed in there i have stable long-term support kernel the zen kernel which we're running on right now and i have a hardened kernel so let's switch into the hardened kernel but when you're booting you have to do this fast so you're going to use your arrow key right now you have like three seconds if you don't do it right away so as soon as you hit your arrow key it stops and if you don't it's going to boot into the kernel that's first in the list so once you hit the arrow key it stops but like i said you have three seconds and i think there is a way to change that seconds to make it longer but i don't know how to do that i'd have to do some research so let's use the arrow keys let's go into advanced options so as we can see we have the zen kernel which we were just running on and that's the first on the list so because it's at the top of the list that's the one that's always going to boot into it's always going to boot into the one that's at the top of the list and then we have the long-term support kernel we have the hardened kernel and i just have the regular stable kernel so let's get into the hardened kernel let's hit enter and it's booting up and this particular virtual machine is not encrypted so it's just asking for my username and my password so i'm going to type in mensch put my password in let's log in and you know what i'm not even going to bother going into the uh desktop environment no need to so we can see we are now running the hardened kernel and let's do an htop and of course i'm just in the tty so right now i'm running at 107 megabytes of ram so apparently the hardened kernel is more difficult to hack into i really don't know <laughs> so running at 107 megabytes of ram let's quit out of there and let's do a neo fetch uh, let's clear the screen let's do a neo fetch again and we can see we're running the hardened kernel now let's uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove 
the stable kernel and the long-term support kernel to make room for those other kernels. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's let's clear the screen. Let's uh, sudo pacman r linux and linux dash lts and put my password in and we're removing those two kernels just to make room so i'm removing the stable kernel and the long-term support kernel so now i only have two kernels installed on my system i have the hardened kernel and the zen kernel so now i'm going to um you know what just for the heck of it i don't know if i need to do this but i'm going to make grub Okay, so Grub is made. So now if I have to reboot, everything's going to be good. And there's only going to be two kernels in the system. Now, what I'm going to do is... Let's install those other kernels. Uh, you know what? Let's clear the screen. Let's bring it to the top and clear the screen. Let's reinst try reinstalling those two kernels. There we are. Okay, and let's install it. So we're installing these... Release kernels, these RT kernels, and it's just taking a second, and I'm going to make grub, and I'm going to try booting into one of them. Oh, yeah, they're called real-time kernels. So those two real-time kernels are installed. Let's make grub. And you know what? Let's clear the screen. And I'm going to make grub. Let's see if this works, and it works. And you can see here it's done. So now I have four kernels again. So if you wanted to have six kernels, when you do your installation, you should probably give your boot menu, and especially it's easier to do this if you're uh, doing a manual install of Arch, you should probably give uh, a gig. You know, if you're going to be installing a lot of kernels all at once, and probably most people don't do that, but if you were going to be doing it, you should probably give uh, your boot partition a gig of uh, RAM. Then you could have all six kernels installed at the same time. And you shouldn't have any trouble making grub. So now that we made grub, let's reboot. Now you gotta be quick. Remember, you gotta hit your arrow keys to stop it from booting into the first kernel. And let's go to advanced options. Now we can see we have the Zen kernel still at the top, so that would be the one it would automatically boot into. We have the real-time LTS kernel, the real-time kernel, and the hardened kernel. So now you can see the stable and long-term support kernels are no longer there. So let's go into uh, the real-time LTS kernel. So this is also a long-term support kernel, but it's real-time. Let's log in booting in and of course the system's not encrypted so there's no encryption password to enter in let's put in my username my password and you can see on the top we're logging into the real-time long-term support kernel and let's do an htop wow running at 77 megabytes of ram Woo. Now I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Of course, I'm not in a desktop or a window manager. I'm just in the TTY. So the TTY is always going to be lighter <laughs> than logging into a desktop. Let's do a NeoFetch. Let's clear the screen. Let's do NeoFetch. And now it's at 85 megabytes of RAM. And you can see I'm in the real time long-term support kernel. Let's see if I can get into uh, my window manager. Let's log into the Qtile window manager. Let's open up my terminal. Let's make it large screen. Let's do an HTOP. So now we're running at 195 megabytes of RAM. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's do a Neo fetch. Nice. So now I'm going to log into, let's try going into 
the real time stable kernel. So I'm going to reboot. Go to advanced options. Let's go to the real time stable kernel. There it is there. Real Linux real time. Let's enter it. We're at the login screen, match. My password. And here we are. Let's do an HTOP. 87 megabytes of RAM. You know what? I really like this real time kernel. Looks like they trimmed down a lot of stuff. Nice. Really nice. Let's do a start X. Let's open up a terminal. Let's make it just a little bit larger and let's do an HTOP in here. 206 megabytes of RAM. Gotta like that. Let's close that. So that's it. That is how you change the kernel in Arch Linux. And as I showed, Arch Linux has available six kernels from the official Arch Linux repository that you can use without having to go into the AUR. And you can have more than one kernel installed in your system at a time, which is good because if you have a problem with the kernel, you can always log into the other kernel. The one thing you have to remember is that when you change kernels or add and delete a kernel, you have to make rub. That's the most important thing. Because if you don't make rub, you won't be able to log into your system and you're going to have to log in with a, a thumb drive, a live version of Arch Linux to fix it. And of course, you're going to have to know how to do that. And it's going to be harder to do that if it's encrypted. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Linux Mensch.